kind of I don't really do intro so it's it's basically just a conversation I, okay yeah because I don't care <laughs> it's, just, it's just two people talking about yeah no and have to put up it with. doesn't have to be super formal or anything yeah. like I mean yeah, I it, you're totally fine yeah I, I don't this is how I, I structure all of them I just like to, to talk to the person like they're a person yeah <laughs> That's how yeah. I always conducted all my interviews with all the developers that I was working with. So, uh, yeah, well, it actually brings me to the first point. How did you get started as a community manager for for that company? So, I actually used to uh, volunteer for a couple different um, video game conventions, and somebody I had worked with was also applying for. He he's the one who applied for the uh, community management job, but they wanted him to relocate. And he's just like, you're down the street. Like you're just a, you're a couple towns away. Like, why don't you apply? And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. So I reached out and had some conversations and went through the interview process. And, uh, and they, they, they liked me. They liked what, uh, what I could bring to the table. So, and that was, this is my first, that was my first gig in the, uh, the actual, like, gaming industry mm -hmm. so. what what do you find rewarding about the gaming industry what is it about that that makes you want to stay a part of it even after all this seeing the creations and the creativity and all that from the developers like people make some really cool stuff and like they they provide amazing and immersive stories like that's that's what gets me into it is like it's just the there's a lot of passion behind it and there's a very passionate community and I it's I, I grew up with gaming mm -hmm. so like I've been a gamer my whole life so it was one of those that I really kind of wanted to insert myself into and see where it goes what was the day-to-day -day, uh job like as a uh, community manager what did all that entail so majority of my day was um, answering DMs, um, answering as many questions I could through the social channels, doing replies on like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of stuff, Reddit. Um, and then I would help kind of organize more um, on the back end for like announcements and getting sales set up and corresponding with developers to make sure we had all the assets that everybody needed. And then also uh, scheduling like Twitch streams with the, with the developers. So uh, I could have them on, on the, the Twitch channel and we'd chat and play the game and have a good old time. And then I'd, I'd, I've worked a couple of events and uh yeah, it's kind of basically any of the forward facing, like customer facing stuff is what I dealt with, the the good and the bad. So like every other customer service job, it, you eventually had to deal with angry people or unpleasant people. Yeah. And you were getting, mm -hmm. you were getting burned out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was actually in the midst of uh, transferring to a different role within the marketing team because I was getting burnt out and I had expressed that and they were just like, yeah, let's do it. Like you've dealt with this long enough. Uh, it's, it's time to let you do, try something new. What were you going to start doing after that? Uh, it would have been more of like a organi organizational role, um, just more of like a, a project management. So uh, more behind the scenes with mm -hmm. uh making sure we had all the information we needed, helping make some of the graphic design stuff for the banners, like that kind of stuff. And then what happened happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it seems now that that you're getting much more positive attention than you seem to have ever gotten before that. Is, oh yeah. Is that correct? It, it, it seems is. like it kind of puts you on a roller coaster like straight to straight to being noticed. It it did. Um and I I'm still completely overwhelmed over the entire thing. Like I, like my email is filled right now and I'm just like, I don't want to respond to anybody <laughs> right now. Like it's because for one, I don't like, I'm going through and I'm trying to look into as many people 
as I can that are reaching out to me be like, okay, well, what are you trying to get out of this? Like, what is my story going to benefit for you? And that's not something I want. I don't want to be used for somebody else's agenda. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care about that. I want to bring attention to how cancel culture in general can inadvertently and negative, negatively affect other people that aren't even in the situation. Like uh, one thing that really makes me mad about this is I understand people are wanting to express their solidarity with, with for me and to boycott LRG, but they're hurting the developers that are that are trying to sell their games and they're affecting their livelihood. And that's something that really upsets me because the developers, this, this stuff has been in works sometimes for years and they don't do deserve to be in the middle of all this. And that's the biggest thing that really makes me mad. I, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand is L limited run games doesn't make, they make mm -hmm. the product, but they do not develop the game. They don't. So even though I can get where people are kind of righteously saying, yes, we're going to cancel it because that's how we're going to vote with our wallets. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's something you really wanted. And now you're not going to get it just because of one corporate call. I, mean, I, yeah. I make them myself in my job too. Sometimes you have to, you have to terminate someone for whatever mm -hmm. reason, regardless well, the <laughs> the industry I work in, we don't fire someone because of Twitter. <laughs> we fire mm -hmm. someone because they're stealing product, or you know, they dropped they dropped a hammer like three stories up and <laughs> it hit someone on the head who wasn't wearing a hard hat. That kind of thing. That Ooh. stuff that stuff that actually affects people. <laughs> yes. But I, I get it from a vote vote with your wallet standpoint. But at the same time, there are people that are just like they work so hard here's this thing we finally made and we have this publisher and now everyone's just pulling out and where else are they going to go? They can't mm -hmm. just pick up the project and say, Hey, let's just shop this to another developer. It's already in the works. It's yeah. Done. Which it, it's unfortunate. I, I do feel bad for them, but it's, you can't, it, it's hard to fault people. <laughs> yeah. For doing that. My boss did it at clownfish TV. Neon did it. He canceled a bunch of orders but they still ship because you couldn't you couldn't just cancel if they were already in house. So they they were mm -hmm. going to ship out. So yeah, because that, that, that was money. It was like right during the the blowout. It was right after the blowout sale, which everything was already in hand. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I'd remember seeing his tweet about that, and I was like, yeah. yeah. And like, I can understand that yeah. because I know that they were going to try to start shipping that as quickly as possible. So. Yeah, I'm I'm sure once they saw the blowback happen, uh, I'm sure there was probably a push to get more more inventory in hand so they they wouldn't lose it. But mm -hmm. I don't I don't think they expected it to blow up as big as it did. Mm -hmm. But it was a very in in the reality of the situation in the real world, not in the Twitter world. No one would have cared what you think or what your politics are or who you follow on Twitter. <laughs> In the real world, no one cares. Mm -mm. But in in that tiny little ecosphere of of Twitter, people have power that shouldn't. Uh, I agree. I, I see think people would time. have more respect for companies if they pushed back. Mm -hmm. but that's the thing. There's, I think it's it's the perception of power that they think Twitter has. Yeah, and if. If just a couple big companies would just go, we don't care. What happened with you would have blown over in exactly three days. It would have been done. It would have it been over. No one would have cared. And the person who brought these things up, suddenly their past would come to light and they would just cancel each other out. It wouldn't matter at all. But unfortunately, what happened happened. And now you've got all this attention. I'm sure there are multiple possibilities opening up for you. Um, one of those is actually... Uh, I brought this up yesterday to Neon because we need writers for the site. And I was like, well, do you want me to just want me to see if she's interested in writing, writing about <laughs> video games because I can't I used write to. every article. <laughs> I actually used to do that. I um, uh, I used to work for, that's actually was my actual first step into gaming 
was, uh, so I did hair for 10 years before I got in, before I worked at like GameStop and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And uh, one of my clients had a um, website that's for gaming news and reviews and that kind of stuff. And he's just like, hey, like you're a gamer. We're sitting here talking about video games while you're cutting my hair. Like let's, let's utilize that. So I started doing reviews and I would go to conventions and do, uh, uh, do can't talk, do interviews, uh, with the game developer, game developers, the voice actors, like all that kind of stuff. So that's something I've actually, I've actually have experience with. Mm -hmm. What do you think you want to do from here? Oh, I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea. I'm just trying to get through this week. I'm, I'm going day by day. I've had a couple of discussions with, um, some various people Mm -hmm. and, uh, who've reached out. I'm like, I'm not making any decisions right now. Like I'm going to take this time to really focus on, um, trying to tone down the situation mm-hmm. and uh yeah because all of us vultures are like going after you like it's nothing we're just like oh yeah. well, let's take advantage of this while we can <laughs> yeah uh, and i've seen a lot of um disinformation out there like misinformation and so i'm trying to correct that okay um which is kind of the the reason i did decide to speak up and did mm-hmm. decide to start doing these that way I could put out my side of it because I think that's that is important because people were starting to make assumptions and and then those assumptions start being taken as fact and and that bugs me mm-hmm. and there's some things that, that just can't be discussed for legal reasons which is totally yeah. understandable and eventually in time it'll come out but it doesn't I don't think there's anything about this story that is such a a redacted there, there's nothing that's really redacted from this that matters yeah. we know what happened we know what you went mm-hmm. through we know the other side of the story okay yeah <laughs> we just know that a lot of people just want to see you do well <laughs> that seems to be the <laughs> that overall is, consensus <laughs> oh my god like i cannot even express the absolute like the amount of people who have dm'd me and emailed me and just been like sharing these links with me of all these different videos that people have made, like even people who don't agree with me or who do think that my tweet was offensive still believe that I shouldn't have been fired. Like it's freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's. We all take that risk every single day, no matter Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't take Twitter seriously, so I'm sure if you look through no. my timeline when you were trying to vet me, see, I just don't <laughs> care. <laughs> if you look at mine, you're going to see pets and art and hyping up my friends mm-hmm. and me talking about shows I'm watching. Like, that's that's it. That's all you're going to find. Like, I actively, <laughs> I actively stayed away from anything controversial that mm-hmm. could even be deemed controversial from any side um, on my on my social media for the last couple of years while I've been a representative for LRG. Like, I mm-hmm. found that was important. So. Uh, just... I, think, <laughs> I think the worst mistake I made in the past year was interviewing Blair White. Not because not because of anything on Blair's side, but because mm-hmm. the death threats like started the second my interview went live. And I was like, Oh god. Why? All we talked about is how she got started in YouTube. That's it. It's it. <laughs> god. But, uh, people are so hypersensitive about everything. And unfortunately, while the internet did give everyone a voice, it gave everyone a voice. Everybody. <laughs> and everybody's opinion matters. Everybody's yep. opinion opinion should be law, which is you have the right to your opinion, but you do not have the right to control others. Mm-hmm. There's there's been so many times uh, when I've written for different sites, like when Netflix would take me to a site a set visit or something, and I'd be in the room with like a whole bunch of other journos, and I'd be the only guy from I'd be the only redneck from Florida in the room, <laughs> and I'd be like, I'm just not gonna say anything. <laughs> I'm just going to keep all my opinions to myself, but I have to hear theirs constantly. And I'm like, I'm going to bite my tongue for two days. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, 
but I'm if from I don't the say South, anything, so I if, get it. If I don't say anything, there's no problem. <laughs> but if I say just one thing wrong, I would I would get yelled at in, in like the middle of a round table just because I had the wrong opinion about Star Wars one time. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you don't debate star wars on anything not like that a, is not with a writer the, from buzzfeed <laughs> oh god you don't know you only debate star wars if you are looking for a fight that's it's gotten that's so it. bad i miss when it, it was just nerds that liked it <laughs> right i, I miss Gosh. when i miss when nerds owned the thing when we owned mm-hmm. our stuff and now when geek chic happened in like 2006 when everyone was suddenly like "Ooh, nerds are trendy that's when it all went downhill yeah but social media is it's the worst horrible. thing that ever happened. it is the worst thing that has ever been created <laughs> i say that as being like my my job with social media like it is the absolute worst thing that has been created stick to dog videos just like nothing else matters just give me the cute content and that's it i don't care uh going back to to limited run games not about the whole controversy or anything but mm-hmm. what was one of the one of your favorite games that they were publishing i think the one that i was the most excited about was haven um that was one that I was, I love the art style of it. It's an absolutely stunning game. Um, I actually just recently beat it within the last few months because even though I have the collector's edition of it, I still went and bought it on Steam because I wanted to, I wanted to play it. I, mm-hmm. I, it was one of those great cozy games, you just curl up on the couch and play. And uh, it I just, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I think that was the one that I was most excited about. I'm, I'm looking forward to, even though I I said, I might not buy from them again, but loom was a game I played when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I played loom when it originally came out and I I'd love to own a physical copy. of. Hold on. I've got. Yeah, so I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I would like to see. I uh, have the ask me about. Too. I have the ask me about Loom button in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like seeing old games getting that getting that attention, where it's not just a digital copy somewhere; mm-hmm. it's something that I can physically have. Because I like I like putting stuff up. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. And like, like uh, I have a whole. I. Can't, my husband says I have a problem because because I was like I have uh, so many boxes because I mean whenever I was there you'd every game that I worked on I'd get it mm-hmm. so I was just like constantly coming home with new stuff and he's like where are you where are you gonna put all of this and I have a, a I've run out of space and so <laughs> I have. I, I still have like two boxes downstairs that I haven't even brought up to my office yet. And uh, I have a box of collector's editions in the attic because I don't have anywhere to display them. Mm-hmm. So, but there, there was a lot of games that I was really, that I really, really loved that I had the opportunity to work on. Like I got to interview the, um the creator of Haven. Mm-hmm. So that was like, that meant a, so much to me and like i had a i had an opportunity to interview um sam and adam deets for for the castlevania show because we had launched um the anniversary collection alongside i think it was season three Mm -hmm. uh whenever it launched so i had the opportunity to have them on the show on the on the stream and i was like oh my god this is like the coolest thing because i went to the um uh, the, the the release, like the mm-hmm. actual uh, premiere of the Netflix show at RTX like years ago. So I was like, it's like full circle. Like I was there and now I get to actually like talk to you and like, this is the coolest thing. So it was just, I have the art book right there. So <laughs> it's well, just, I, yeah. thank you so much for, I, I know you got flooded with, with people asking you and, me being 
small time hardly doing this <laughs> lazy oh, <shush. laughs> i'm glad you came because what you told me you have some you have some big big names lined up to talk to you, which is exciting exciting and then absolutely nerve-wracking like mm -hmm. i like to the point to where i was like oh my god like should i just cancel this like i don't know if i want to do this like i'm freaking out right now like do i want all this attention but it's i it's more of i don't care about me in the whole mm -hmm. process it's more of it i think it's an awesome opportunity to bring light to how this affects hundreds of other people whenever they are directing their aggression towards one so my final question would be since you just recently went through this how what would what would be your words to people that are facing that kind of struggle of having to deal with online harassment or an online hate campaign to threaten their job what would be your advice to them look to your support system I will admit the the Friday that everything went down, it was not a good day. It was not a good day. It was it was it was rough. And but I instead of sitting around the house and moping, I got up, I went for a walk around the neighborhood and I talked to my husband about everything and trying to just kind of sit down and figure out what what we can start doing and start trying to make sure everything's fine and uh just don't let it get in your head because the internet doesn't really matter that much yeah. like some some anonymous person that i've never met before who doesn't know me and who wanted to take a tweet out of context from seven years ago like it didn't even speak to me to ask, Hey, do you still have like, what were your, what were your initial thoughts on this? Or do you still have these feelings? Like a simple conversation could have fixed that, but they wanted to go straight to an attack. So the thing I would say is just, if you have family, if you have friends, go to them and get out, go for a walk. That's that's what really helped me was getting out and go immerse yourself into a hobby. Like I like to do a lot of crafting and of course I play video games. So I've just kind of tried to distract myself as much as possible.